Now let's look at learning objective B, in which we're going to convert radians to degrees and degrees to radians. First, let's do some review again of radian measurement. Remember, given that we have a unit circle, and a unit circle just means the radius is one unit, or the number one, uh, the length or magnitude of the rotation is going to be in terms of pi's. That's what a radian means, is how many pi's exactly. So one complete circle has 360 degrees, it has one revolution, and it has two pi exact radians. Remember, that was approximately 6.28, but start getting used to saying 2 pi instead. Now, approximate how many radians do we see in each graph? The easiest way to start looking at these is to kind of split the circle up. So this first one right here, we know that at one half of a circle, or that top movement, is one piece of pi. So that's a one pi movement. Uh, this other bottom half here is going to be a complete another one piece of pi, but we're not doing a full one piece of pi. Here it almost looks like that this is broken into six pieces. So this full rotation looks like it's one pi with another one sixth of a pi. So one and one sixth of a pi. Now be careful, we don't tend to state radians as mixed numbers, they tend to be in proper fractions. So to do that, remember to do 6 times 1, which is 6, and then add this, so that would be 7 pi over 6, approximately. Now this next one, be careful, it looks like they are going to be going backwards, so they're moving this rotation. So first of all, we know it's negative. Um, again, this first part, if we go from here to here, is one piece of pi, um, but they're not quite doing a full one piece. It looks like maybe this might be in sixths again. Maybe not the best, but close to it. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So approximately negative five pi over six will be a reasonable answer. Now in the last one, take note. Notice what they're doing is they're going around the circle one complete rotation. That's two pieces of pi. Then they're going to go another half of a circle. That's one pi and then a little bit more. So if we kind of follow that and jot it down, again, that right here is a 2 pi movement, plus this other half a circle is another 1 pi movement, and then this extra little piece. So we're talking about this little chunk. Again, that might be approximately a sixth of that half of a circle, so 1 sixth. So then really what we're adding together is the full complete circle turn of 2 pi, then a half of a circle of 1 pi, so we're at 3, and then another 1 6. So it looks like about 3 and 1 6 of a pi. Again, that's a mixed number, so let's do 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1 is 19, so about 19 pi over 6. Do notice they are going in counterclockwise rotation, so it should be a positive value. You know, again, I think it's very important for us to be a little redundant at first. Um, in a complete circle, radians, degrees, and revolutions. Uh, degrees are 360, radians exactly 2 pi, revolutions 1. Um, and we're not going to fill in all the missing pieces on this table below, but let's just look at the degrees and the radians connection on here. Right here is our first blank, where we have a one fourth of a pi is how many degrees. Um, if you take a look at the circle up here, they already did this, this one of 30 degrees is pi over 6. Uh, so keep in mind, a half of a circle is 1 pi. This is chunked off into 6 sectors, so it's pi over 6. Um, what you can do for this is to figure out how many degrees is in a radian. You can always set up a proportion. So remember, it's one fraction set equal to the other. Um, now on here, we're talking about degrees and radians, so those go on the bottom of my fractions. A full circle is 360 degrees, which is the same as 2 pi radians. Here, we know it's pi over 4 radians, but I don't know the degrees. So if you can solve this mathematically, you can actually get the answer. Now, the first thing we'd want to do, here we have a complex fraction. We have a fraction within a fraction. Easiest way to get cleared up is to get rid of the bottom here. So I'm going to go and multiply by the reciprocal. This is just 2 pi over 1, so it's 1 over 2 pi, which will actually clear out the bottom. If you do it at the bottom of a fraction, you should need to do it to the top. Now what's going to happen here is notice, again, the 2 pi's, those become 1, that's 1. 
uh, that pi and that pi actually cancel out. So what we're going to end up getting is x over 360 equals, uh, it looks like, 1 over 8. Now to finish solving this mathematically, to get x by itself, it's being divided by 360, so multiply. So if you do 360 divided by 8, what you're going to get here is that x is going to equal 45 degrees. And that would be our answer here. Now, we could do a similar thing uh, for this next one. Pi over 3 is how many particular degrees? Um, the easiest way, if you're really stuck, is again to set up the proportion. So what you would do, let's just do that. I would say a full circle again is 360. Uh, I need to go to radians, so I'm using 2 pi. I don't know the degrees, but I know pi over 3. To clear this off, I'm going to multiply by 1 over 2 pi. And that's going to leave me with uh, x over 360. Now over here, again, this all cancels. The pi's cancel. And remember, multiply fractions, so straight across, it's 1 sixth. To solve this mathematically, I've multiplied both sides by 360 degrees. And when you do that, what you're going to get is the number of degrees will be 60 degrees. So you can always set up a proportion to get the answer. Now, I do want to show you a very nice trick. Whenever you have to go from radians to degrees, and this only works from radians to degrees, here's what you can do. Go over, and let's just look at pi over 4. And if you look at pi over 4, think about this. How many degrees is one piece of pi? One piece of pi is half a circle. Well, that's 180 degrees. So watch this. 180 degrees divided by 4. What you're going to get is 45 degrees. This is an incredibly easy way to go from radians to degrees. Let me do one more. Pi over 3. Again, to go from radians to degrees, I know that one piece of pi is 180 degrees, so I'm going to replace it with that. Take 180 divided by 3, what do you get? 60 degrees, which is what was our answer. So this trick is excellent if you remember it. If you don't, the proportion method will always work. Let's try this one. Uh, they want us to convert degrees to radians this time. Now, they've sketched for us what a 100-degree movement looks like. Again, we started here. This is 90 degrees, and they go another 10. So that's about a 100-degree movement. We are in quadrant 2. They want us to convert it to radians. So again, if you're stumped on how to do this, if you set up a proportion, it will work every time. So our proportion here is we're going to go from degrees to radians. So a full circle is 360 degrees, 2 pi radians. This time I know the degrees. I don't know the radians. If you simplify this math, you will get exactly how many pieces of pi this is. And be careful, we write our answers as simplified improper fractions. So I'm going to start by simplifying this side right here. Um, I'm going to cross off the last zeros. So I have 10 over 36. Well, 10 out of 36, I can actually uh, pull out a 2. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. 36 divided by 2 is 18. It's actually helpful to simplify these fractions ahead of time, too. Okay, now to get x by itself, the last thing I would do is not divide by 2 pi, but multiply. And here's what we're going to have. This will be 10 pi over 18. Now, you have to be careful. Again, simplify. Um, I can pull a 2 out of here, so that would be 5. A 2 out of here would be 9. Our answer is 5 pi over 9 radians exactly. So when we keep the value of pi within the radian, that is considered to be exact. Now approximate it, all you have to do for part b is you would say, well pi is approximately 3.14. You would simplify this and you're going to get 1.75 radians. Which means, remember, you can lay the radius out about 1.75 times. So if this is one radius, and we would tick mark like we did with our candies, this is another 75% of a radius. That's how we can get to the radians. So radians can be viewed as pieces of pi, remembering 
two pieces of pie in one circle, or how you lay the radius out. So these two measurements mean the same thing, they just come from a completely different perspective. One uses pies and one uses laying the radius outside of the circle. Now I wanna show you a shortcut trick for this. Um, personally, when people are first learning this, I do just suggest the proportions because it's one method that works for everything. But if you want a trick to go from degrees to radians, what you can do is this, is we know a radian is a piece of pie. So the answer is gonna look like a piece of pie. And then there's typically a fraction in front of here. Well, what I know about one piece of pie is it's equivalent to 180 degrees. So I'm gonna put 180 degrees here. Because technically, if a piece of pie is 180 degrees and this is 180 degrees, it's almost like I'm doing the same thing on the top and the bottom. So it's kind of like uh, they would equal one if I had to simplify. So if you use this standard format, a nice shortcut to go from degrees to radians is just always use this standard format and all you do is you take the degrees and you put it right here. So if you do this, all you have to do now is actually simplify the fraction. To simplify this fraction, it would become 50 pi over nine and that would be the radian movement. You do have the other option if you don't remember this trick to set up your proportion. We're not gonna solve it, but to set it up, it'd be 360 two pies, I don't know that, I know this is a thousand, do the math to solve it, you will get this right here. Now let's, before we wrap this up, let's actually graph this by the way. A uh, thousand degrees, well one rotation is 360, a second rotation would be at 720, and then that's going to leave us with another 280 degrees to move, so that's a 180, so another 100 degrees, that'd be 90, somewhere down in here is how you would sketch 1,000 degrees counterclockwise. All right, let's do another one here. Convert one radian to degrees exactly. Now, I don't have a great trick for this one, so I'm just gonna do the proportions. Uh, radians to degrees, so 360 degrees, two pi radians. They've given me one radian. Now, they're not using pies, they're just using the regular. So all I would do here, and I don't know the degrees, is on my calculator, I would do one divided by two pi. Be incredibly careful. You must type one divided by, in parentheses, two pi. If you type one divided by two pi, that is absolutely wrong. What it's going to do in this case, it, the calculator will do one divided by two, and then it will take that answer and times it by pi. So don't do this method. Make sure you type it appropriately. And then the last step to solve this algebraically, to get the x by itself, you'd multiply both sides by 360. So you can even wait if you want to, and then what you would type in your calculator to finish this up on this is you could type 360 divided by, again in parentheses, the 2 pi, and then you're going to get approximately the 57.3 degrees. Let's sketch it. Well, here's one radius. If we put one of those laying out there, it's going to look something like that is one radian movement.